and graduated top of her class and took on a career path that has seen her work become the reference point on how healthcare at community level is managed. Our guest is the former Chancellor of Moy University, Professor Miriam Wary. Thank you very much, Mr. It's an extreme privilege and honor to host a true living legend. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. It's my honor that you came to talk with me. Thank you. Let's start off. Let's go back to your early life, uh, your education in Kenya and uh, in the United States. I, I grew up in Western Kenya, uh, out just outside Kakameka town in a place called Shinyalu, Lukala village. I was so understaffed. The university could not allow us to have a master program because we were teaching double. And so I said to them myself, I must find a way to establish the department to be able to have a master's degree. So I went, I talked with WHO, I talked with the other international groups, and uh, they told me that they could sponsor teachers for a year or two. And they did. They sponsored a, a, a doctor from UK, they sponsored another new doctor from Australia, and they came. And now we were able to, we could, we could, we could actually uh, mount the mass of public health. So we did. In 1983, that's when I became the chair in 1982. So in 1983, we, were, we mounted the first master of public health program in Kenya, because even the Ministry of Health needed them, not only the Department of Community Health. You've worked with global organizations like World Health Organization, UNICEF, uh, in developing public health uh, policies. Now, one of your contributions uh, is in children's health. Um, tell us how this policy was developed from your work in Kenya, Ethiopia, and other countries, but specifically Ethiopia, because you spent about 15 years in Ethiopia? Yes. And I think it was very special to you? You know, because when I finished, when, when I had, when my first group of graduates for the Master of Public Health came out, the UNICEF Executive Director came to Nairobi actually and he told me, you said you would not live before the Master of Public Health program. Now it is established. Now you have reproduced yourself nine times because they are all graduated now. Now you better go and pay attention to Ethiopia because they also need you. And by that, at that time, <coughs> The, the, the terrible famine was hitting Ethiopia. That famine, the drought and the famine. So out of my, my I went there in 1985 as UNICEF's Chief of Health and Nutrition. And at that time, things were desperate because the mothers were dying, the children were dying, and the, the, the starvation was really high level. Uh, so one of the things I had to do was to actually mobilize food uh, food for the children to come so that we could give handouts to children uh, in terms of food and uh, and especially for the, the north at that point in time was devastating yes it was a very terrible time because because of the drought the Ethiopian people are very responsible people but the drought had had really done this for them and uh, and then as part of this when I was in Ethiopia UNICEF established what they called the Child Survival Program. And they had a, a task force for the Child Survival Program. And I was a member of that task force. And I could, the part that I won was the one on expansion of health services through the community health approach. It was, it was a very big prize because when we went to Japan for what the... What did you feel? Oh, I, you know I, mean, I felt happy yeah. because, of course, I felt that, oh, my work is recognized. But even more importantly, I felt happy that community health work is, is recognized. Now you co-founded the Ozima Foundation. Tell us what work you're doing via this charity. Ozima Foundation, you know, we, we established it in 1995. Because uh, like most of us, uh, my age group, you grew up in an area where so many children were not able to go to school because they couldn't have school fees and so on and so on. And my husband and I have spent a lot of our money on that for the community school, for the community children, not necessarily only in our families. But you know, the point is that as you get more exposed, the ones who reach you are not only your communities, but 
children who have come for me for, to, to ask money from us, from Machakos, from Baringo, from Narok. Can you help us? So we thought we can't just think about community. We let us have an organization that can reach as many children as possible. And that is when we established the Zima Foundation. We registered it in 1995. Uh, we actually had been saving, we actually saved it deliberately to, 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 to up to, when we got two million, you know, from my husband and I, we thought two million was a lot of money. So we registered uh, Zima Foundation. To our great shock, this two million was, um, within a year, it was no longer there. <laughs> and finally, we're coming to the end of the interview. Your final closing words to us. Some words of wisdom, advice you'd like to give uh, the younger generation or people as a whole. And coming from you would be... Who is being awarded such an award? We thank everyone who has worked behind them, worked alongside them and helped them along the way.